Travel is a great connector. There's a lot of talk out there about, well, if we care about the environment, then we shouldn't be getting on planes. While I respect people with that perspective, I, I disagree. I think that the net benefit of travel absolutely is something that will help our planet to thrive. You have to make sure that you're traveling as lightly as possible with the most responsible companies, the companies that support the local communities where they operate. If you love travel and also worry about the climate and feel like maybe you can't do both of those things at the same time, get ready to be inspired. You're about to learn how some travel companies are taking real climate action and how you can join in and support the movement. I am Ketty. I have a master's degree in sustainability and I write a blog called TiltedMap.com about realistic advice for more sustainable travel, whether you are on top of a mountain like we are here or taking a city trip. Today I want to share what I've learned about the innovative climate solutions that some travel companies are embracing through an organization called Tomorrow's Air. Tomorrow's Air is part of the leading climate solutions platform called REN. And today I'm on my way to go interview Ted Martins from Natural Habitat Adventures. He's the voice you heard at the beginning of this video. And we're going to talk about how that company is working with Tomorrow's Air to invest in meaningful climate solutions and how you and I can do the same thing. Those two organizations sponsored this video and I'm really proud to be an ambassador ambassador for Tomorrow's Air because it means that not only do I get to help spread the word among travelers about climate action and climate solutions technologies, but it also means I get to help companies discover how they can integrate those climate solutions into their climate action plans. Let's go see what we learn. So we all know that climate is a really big topic and it can be really hard for any one person or even any company to know where to begin or to feel like they can actually have an impact. That's why when I first heard about Tomorrow's Air and about permanent carbon removal and storage, I wanted to understand more about how it worked and more about how to get involved. And that's why I'm here with Ted from Natural Habitat Adventures today. So Ted, can you tell us a bit about who you are? Sure, yeah. I'm Ted. I'm with Natural Habitat Adventures. We're a wildlife and nature tour operator. We run trips around the world to see big animals, and we have a mission of conservation through exploration. So we believe that travel has the power to protect wild places and wild species by supporting the local communities that live in proximity to the wildlife, to take care of it, to steward it, and also to inspire the travelers who come through and experience Earth's most wild and amazing places. And then in addition to all the conservation work that NatHab does, you're also investing with Tomorrow's Air, investing in, in carbon removal. Yep, we've been working for many, many years on a variety of different sustainability initiatives, and one of our most exciting partnerships is with Tomorrow's Air. Fantastic organization focused on the travel industry specifically to help us get engaged with these emerging technologies that are removing carbon from the atmosphere. So we've got this massive problem of too much carbon that has been emitted. We're doing all sorts of things we can to reduce those emissions through our business operations, but we also want to be supporting technology technologies uh, that are taking that carbon out of the air and storing it permanently. Tomorrow's Air is our partner in that journey. That is such an amazing mission and I know that you all have been involved in sustainability for a long, long time. You've been a leader in the travel industry on so many different topics. You got rid of single-use plastics in what, 2009? Mm -hmm. Something like that? Yep. Okay, you did a zero waste trip in Yellowstone, I think, in right. a decade later. Yep. Okay, so you've been doing really industry-leading projects and now you also invest with Tomorrow's Air, is that right? That's correct, yeah. So what can you tell me a little bit more about why you work with Tomorrow's Air and what kind of projects you're funding through them? Part of what's so great about Tomorrow's Air is that they are the ones that are doing the due diligence and the vetting of what projects are the right ones to bring to their community, to the travel industry. That conservation mission that I was telling you about is part of the DNA of the company. Company. and we've been measuring our carbon impacts since back in 2007. You can't really manage what you don't measure. That full understanding of what it means to take a trip with us, all of the operations on the ground, the flight, so we have a, a great understanding of what our carbon footprint is. And we've been working in different ways to manage that carbon footprint for years. We have been involved in offsetting for many years, but what we have come to realize is that there are technologies out there that are crucial to the future of our planet in terms of removing carbon from the atmosphere. Unfortunately, a lot of these technologies are are rather expensive, somewhat nascent in their development. And so Tomorrow's Air came to us and said, hey, you know, these are technologies we're gonna need in order for us to meet the guidelines that we need to, to have a healthy planet. And so we've been investing in their programs for four or five years now. That's so cool to see because as someone who works in the travel industry, I work with a ton of different travel companies. This is not something that you see from most travel companies. So it's really exciting. Boulder, where you're from or where NatHab is based is really close to where we are right now, which is Red Rock outside of Denver, Colorado, which I thought was a cool place to talk about about this because it's such a great example of one of Tomorrow's Air's technologies, which is enhanced rock weathering. Mm -hmm. I did it! Oh my god! <laughs> 
So I'm here on top of this big red rock to tell you about enhanced rock weathering and how it absorbs carbon dioxide from the air and how it's a wonderful thing that you should invest in with tomorrow's air because it's a natural process, kind of like me climbing up on this rock. I'm a natural. So just a little aside, carbon removal is exactly what it sounds like. It's removing carbon dioxide that has already been emitted into the atmosphere, sucking it out of the air and storing it permanently. And it happens all the time through natural processes. Trees, soil, rocks, the ocean, they all absorb carbon dioxide and hold it for varying amounts of time. What's really cool though, is that now scientists are discovering lots of new ways to improve carbon removal processes and to absorb more carbon dioxide and to store it permanently. So it's not going to be released like when a tree falls down or burns down, for example. And one really interesting way to do carbon removal is through enhanced rock weathering. And that's why I'm sitting on a big rock here at Red Rocks to illustrate this because it's a natural process where it rains on the rocks, the rocks dissolve, they fall apart into little bits and those little bits absorb carbon dioxide. I'm skipping over some of the more technical parts. It's something that happens naturally all the time. And scientists have just discovered that by choosing specific types of rock, they can absorb even more carbon dioxide by spreading crushed up olivine on farmers' fields. And then the farmers don't have to buy other products that they would normally have to spread on their fields to achieve the same thing. And it absorbs carbon dioxide from the air and it helps the farmers and it helps the world. And the cool thing is in Norway, I learned about a specific kind of rock that absorbs even more CO2 from the atmosphere. And that is called olivine. So at the Climate Solutions Conference that Tomorrow's Air put on, we were really close to the place in Norway where they mine olivine, which is used in just this one one type of carbon removal. And at the conference, we also learned about a few other types of carbon removal that Tomorrow's Air is supporting. And I think personally, as a traveler, that that's a really powerful thing to invest in. The cool thing about Tomorrow's Air and about investing in carbon removal is that NatHab is already doing all of these amazing sustainability projects, but investing with Tomorrow's Air is something that you don't have to already be really advanced in your sustainability journey as a company or as an individual to be able to invest with Tomorrow's Air and have a real impact because it doesn't take organizing the entire company to figure out how to become zero waste, how to get rid of single use plastics. It just takes the knowledge and the understanding and the willingness to invest in these emerging technologies. Everybody's heard about carbon offsetting, and that's personally one of the things that I like the most about Tomorrow's Air. It's not asking you to create a direct equivalence and say, this flight, we're going to cancel it out with this offset. It's just saying, we know that we're doing things that have an impact on the climate, let's also do things to fix that. And I really love that because I think it's a really hopeful and really powerful way to think about the world. We need both, and we obviously also need nature-based solutions, but it's really cool to see such a nature-focused travel company also investing in technologies. To combat climate change, we need a, a comprehensive approach. There's no need to argue that this one technology is better or should happen over this one or that. The truth is, is we need yeah. the support with all sorts of things. We need to be planting trees. We need to be putting solar panels on schools in rural areas. We, of course, need to be removing carbon from the atmosphere. It's not a one or the other, it's a yes and. As you've mentioned, Tomorrow's Air is one of the first organizations to bring the message of carbon removal especially to the travel industry, but even to the, the traveling public at large. And this is a, a set of vetted and really, really important technologies that must be in place and must become more scalable for us to, uh, to create the future that, that our kids and grandkids will, will want to inherit. Carbon removal is relatively new to the conversation. And it was the Tomorrow's Air team that said, hey, this is what the travel industry should care about. What we need to do is support these technologies that are going to ultimately get us to the levels of CO2 that will allow our planet to be healthy. Absolutely. And that just need more funding to scale. That's the interesting thing right. is these are such emerging nascent technologies that they need more people investing in them. And they also need more individual small investments because they need to be able to prove that they have not just one big company giving them a billion dollars, but lots of individuals and lots of smaller companies that believe in the technology. It's cool that any company, even if they're in the beginning of their sustainability journey, can work with Tomorrow's Air, but it's really cool to hear that trust from a company that is so developed in sustainability that you really have sustainability experts on staff, you know what you're talking about. You're not just trying to throw money out to be able to have something that looks good in your marketing efforts. So if you enjoyed hearing about this today, stay tuned for more videos about other kinds of carbon removal and about other sustainable travel companies that are making it happen. And make sure you subscribe to Tilted Map channel for more relatable, realistic, sustainable travel ideas. And if you're a travel company, I would really encourage you to do what NatHab is doing and start investing with Tomorrow's Air because it's a really straightforward, simple 
way to have a very real impact on our climate. This is measurable, it's real, and it's very much needed. It's an area where investment really does make a difference because these are technologies that need your support in order to be able to grow. And if you're an individual, if you're a traveler watching this, you can also contribute to Tomorrow's Air for just a few dollars a month. And Tomorrow's Air also has lots of resources on education about how these technologies work. They're very readable, they're not too dense. Tilted Map also has lots of resources and education about the carbon emissions of travel and how you can reduce the emissions of your own personal travel in lots of creative ways that you might not have heard of before. So check those both out and stay tuned for more. Travel is a great connector. It's a great educator, it's a great inspirer. There's a lot of talk out there about, well, if we care about the environment, then we shouldn't be getting on planes. While I respect people with that perspective, I disagree. I think that the net benefit of travel absolutely is something that will help our planet to thrive. It's when you know a place or you know a species, that's what inspires you to want to do something about it. The inspiration that comes from travel is one of the most important things that we can do to initiate action, but you have to make sure that you're traveling as lightly as possible with the most responsible companies as possible, with the companies that support the local communities where they operate. It's a delicate balance for sure. We want our travel to have the greatest impact possible with the least amount of negative impact.